Welcome back for another exit interview where I talk about games that have left my board game collection and why. And in this episode, I'm tackling a big one, Concordia. It's the 20th best board game ever made according to the Board Game Geek board game rankings. And it's generally one of the most praised and beloved Euro board games out there. Um, Shut up and sit down lavish this game with praise in their uh, now uh, famous or infamous review of this game and it's since captured and won the hearts of many board game reviewers and been generally considered as the best game designed by the designer Matt Gertz um, and I think that all makes perfect sense to me Concordia is a great game in many ways and I think this is really an interesting story for me because it sort of reflects some of my naivety and perhaps lack of experience as a relatively newbie gamer when uh, I acquired Concordia and played it. So um, I think it, I, I was into the hobby for about two years, I was board gaming for about two years or so when I bought Concordia, mostly off the back of uh, a lot of the reviews that came out at the time uh, that really praised it and I, I really liked the look of it and I actually quite liked the old boring trading the Mediterranean theme, what can I say? Uh, I, I'm a Mediterranean myself, so I, I, I'm a little bit partial to that theme. But, you know, it looked like a very cool game. And when I played it, I think the thing that I really enjoyed the most was the card play. I just love that sort of mechanism of having this hand of cards that you could go through, uh, something that you could gradually upgrade and augment as you bought new cards from the marketplace and um, the kind of ability to, you know, maybe take some slightly different strategies, focus on slightly different products um, and approaches. And also the other nice element whereby certain actions you trigger will not only be beneficial to you, but to other players um, when you're triggering uh, production regions and what have you. So a lot of really nice things about this game. And I think those are things that I totally respect and understand why people love and, and, and I'm not going to for one second try to say that this is a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. However, I think the problem that I had at the time was one, my wife kept beating me at this game mercilessly uh, and, now, and that was at the time again, I talked about my naivety and um, sort of inexperience as a newbie. Little did I know that I was just terrible at board games and uh, that's something that time has, has uh, you know proven out uh, since then and that was a very um, shallow reason to get rid of a game because as I said I pretty much suck and lose most of the time when I play board games but that aside um, there were other aspects of the game that kind of frustrated me and I think going back deeper into that notion of why I lost the games I was playing it was because something in this game just kind of didn't really click with uh, my thought process there was something about this game I just couldn't really grok um, and it, w- it was sort of looking at formulating an effective strategy. And I think part of that was I felt that the game sort of finished a little bit too early. It's almost like when you just start getting your engine really humming and you've spread out to enough territories to make production interesting and you've maybe acquired a number of um, interesting cards from the marketplace to really boost your, your productivity that the game kind of then comes to an end relatively quickly after that in most cases and I think that was one of the things that I didn't quite ca- you know grasp when I was first playing this game that um, you know you're not playing like Civilization Sid Meier's Civilization here it's it's a, a game that has a limited time run and you have to move relatively quickly to, to get a strategy going and maybe focus in on uh, a sort of a, an approach that's going to give you bonuses at the end of the game with cards and that's the other thing that's quite interesting for me with this game is that it's very car driven. It's you know it looks at first when you look at the game and you sit down and play it like oh there's this map and if I get a bunch of territory I get all these cool resources and you know uh, other points from that. But actually, a lot of those resources and points and territories don't count for much unless you have the cards at the end of the game to maximize your points from those. So that was something that took me a little bit of time to understand. Um, and I think those are really the only criticisms criticisms I could level but because I had a really voracious appetite to try new games at the time uh, and you know uh, with this kind of minimalist approach of having limited shelf space to store my games and and kind of like you know being excited about trying new games in the hobby 
I got rid of the game relatively quickly. And actually, my wife was was pretty annoyed about that. And she's still kind of annoyed about it to this day. Fast forward, uh, you know, a couple of years. And I managed to actually play another game of Concordia last year. And um, it was really interesting to kind of compare, you know, what what did the more experienced me think of this game? And how did the more experienced me find the, the you know, the, the gameplay of Concordia? And... You know, I still think all the things that I enjoyed about the game were there. You know, I, I really found the card play almost even more impressive, even more elegant. And, um, you know, I, I was really just kind of more appreciative of the design, uh, you know, ingenuity behind the, the card gameplay mechanism there. Um, I still lost. That's one thing to note. Uh, but we covered that, I think, sufficiently. Uh, and I, I still had some of those same issues with trying to get the timing right of, uh, you know, uh, where to focus, how to focus t to, to win. But I think I appreciated the game a lot more. And it's actually, uh, you know, a relatively simple game in many ways. Uh, I remember when I first played it, because, again, I was a little bit more inexperienced, I thought it was, oh, this is kind of a, a serious, pretty heavy-seeming game. But as I've become more experienced, I've realized that it's actually a relatively simple game. Um, so that's another thing in favor of it, but, um, I still kind of had that issue grokking it and, and understanding it properly. Now, I do think that it's a game that if you, uh, you know, got a group of people and you were playing on a semi-regular basis, you would all get a bit better and a bit more familiar and a bit more fluent with it. And my position now really on this game is, I think notionally I... I could see myself getting this game back into my collection, especially with the new sort of Venus re-release 2.0 version of Concordia that was released. I can kind of imagine perhaps getting this game back into my collection. I don't feel like a dying, burning need to get it back in my collection, despite perhaps a more experienced me having a greater appreciation for this game. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's one that I'll think about more and perhaps if I get a little bit more space or I shift my collection around a little bit I might have room to make for Concordia because I really do think that card mechanism is pretty cool and relatively unique although there are some games other games that I've played that do also do something similar I think it is still relatively unique um so where does where does this leave us at the end of this conversation at the end of this uh you know video I would say um I kind of wanted to just share a bit of this story because it's interesting to see how the more inexperienced me uh, reacted to a game versus the more experienced me. I still don't think that I'm, you know, uh, massively eager to get this game back in my collection. But by the same time, I think it's a game that a lot of people should experience because it's got this sort of classical midway Euro flavor to it, which I think is interesting to explore. Uh, if you look at game uh, board games as a kind of a, you know, an explorative exercise playing board games where you're kind of trying to discover new experiences. Uh, it's kind of like if you're into movies or, or films and, you know, there's a kind of a quirky uh, film that y you should probably watch if, if you're interested in a certain genre of films or whatever. So, yeah, it, it's a difficult one. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I want to get it back in my collection, but at the same time, I would definitely encourage people to try this one out and see, you might be more like me where perhaps the game doesn't quite click for you but you still respect it, you might absolutely love it, um, or you might not like it at all. But I think it's definitely, you know, number 20 on BGG for a reason, and that's worth trying it out. Um, whether it comes back into my collection or not, I don't know, but I guess I'll keep you guys posted. So that's the exit interview. Um, uh, Concordia.